I'm Matthew Barnaby, and you are watching Nasty Knuckles. You're listening to Nasty Knuckles, the Hockey Outlaws podcast, with your host, Terry Nasty Sotomayor, and former Philadelphia Flyer enforcer, Riley as they go behind the scenes with your favorite NHL players. Time to face off. All right, welcome back. What's happening, Nasty? What's up, Regarelia? Feeling pretty good about yourself? Uh, n- not about myself. <laughs> <laughs> about our team, yeah. Not about myself. I thought you were trotting around a little high step here today. Oh, I mean, I, you know, I've been carrying a cup into a couple of establishments oh, this there. Whole thing? Yeah, this whole thing, oh. the old Dunlop's Cup. We were able to finish off the season with a big win. Um, champs. Got to thank Jim Boucher, Dunlop's Boucher, you're the man. Um, letting the boys, you know, have a day with a cup. And I hope he doesn't mind. You know, we've had our names all etched into it. And it may be the first time that's been done, but yeah. uh we'll have to toss a new ring on there next year. Yeah, they're gonna have to. They're gonna have to, but this thing's great. It sits up in Dunlops at Hollydale. So thanks to Jim Boucher and um Jim Mackey for having us in the league. It's it was, been fun. It's a fun We start up next week. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> we start quick a new season. That's quick, what happens when you go the quick distance. turnaround, gotta gotta throw uh gotta throw Foxy's name out there. MVP. John Fox, MVP of the game. Uh, Hattie, not Hattie. a big deal. You had a pretty sick goal. Baller would probably throw up there. I had uh, was a nice fall. First shift. It was a tough Went to tough jump the boards. The I thought someone like grabbed my foot. No, I just fell and... I can't use my right thumb right now, and then I got <laughs> then I got slashed in yeah. my left one. Hey, don't feel feel free to brace yourself next time you fall, it's buddy. Like, I didn't think I was gonna fall like that. I just went to hop the boards. We gotta get that footage. But it happens. Oh yeah, footage. baller baller's got it. He'll he'll probably he bounce back it. though. I, yeah, I couldn't hold my st- hold my stick with these. I couldn't use my thumb. Who needs I thumbs? suck anyway. <laughs> Obviously, I wasn't any better or worse. <laughs> I just sucked anyway. So, um, yeah. It was fun, man. The boys and had some uh, clear rum in the room after uh, Big W, and we got a new sponsor since we won uh, the cup. They're Winners get on. rewarded, Nas. Winners get rewarded. Beer. If you haven't tried this, you better get out and get it. It's unbelievable. If you're not into other types of uh, the clear rum, which everyone is, but if you're a beer drinker. Garage beer is the way to go. Beer flavored beer. It is. It's unbelievable. So it was nice. Nice of them. They they like champions. They like champions. Well, who doesn't? So they wanted to wanted to jump on. Uh, but honestly, great time. Thanks again to Jim Boucher. Uh, you're the man, brother. Yeah. On to next season. Yes, which starts next week. Yep. Quick little uh, turnover. Little turn Got a seven day recovery. Rest, rest yourself a little bit. Get back at Get it. Get back at it. What um, we got going on, Nass? Well, we got some a uh, little bit of bad news here. Well, you know, we're trying to kind of wait to see what's going on. But, uh, you know, Carter, our good friend Carter Hart, uh, asked for a leave of personal reasons, left for a uh, leave of absent, absence from the team, and it was granted. Um, really can't say too much because we don't know exactly uh, what what's going on. So just, you know, kind of leave it at that, I guess. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, there's a lot of speculation going out there, and certainly don't want to be the ones spreading misinformation. Right, but, exactly. Um, whatever is happening, um, you know, we wish everyone the, the, the best. And I yeah. don't know how, you know, how yeah. this all plays out, but, um, um, you know, it's, it's certainly not good for any individual, certainly not good for hockey. Um, but uh, you got to respect his uh, decision to s- step away for the yep. time being. A few other guys have done the same. It looks yep. like around the league here now. So, yep. um, you know, Flyers do their press conference this morning and really not showing. There's nothing really nothing to say. Show, yeah. Yeah, nothing really to say. You know, yeah. it's not like they're holding anything back because I'm not even sure if the Flyers fully know uh, what's going on. So, yeah, because exactly. time will tell. And uh, you know, wish everyone. You know, the best the, outcome. The best possible. outcome, you know. Yep. It's uh, unfortunate circumstances. But it is. It really is. 
But uh, you know the show must go on. The, the show's Sabers going on. Stepping in. Um, yep. Call up Cal Peterson, and um, you know the Flyers have dropped the last three. Unfortunately, of course, because we were so excited last week. We had won you know five in a row. But yeah, tough games this week. Uh, you know the Avs, they're really good. You know you dropped that one seven four. Losing the the center game. You know actually they're they're actually playing well. I think in their last six or four one and one. Um, <clears throat> lost that one. One of the hardest hits I've seen in a long time. Ridley Gregg, his oh, dad, yeah. is a scout for the Flyers and, and obviously played here. He hit Risto. He caught Risto around the, the red line there. And, and uh, it was funny. I was talking to Claude Giroux after the game, and he said that might be the hardest hit I've ever seen live. Really? He hey, said well, he brought up Richie. He brought, he brought up Mike Richards, a uh, couple of his hits. Yeah. And, uh, no, Richie. Richie's oh, Richie, hits. Yeah, yeah Rich, uh, Richie's hit on um, Booth. Oh, on and, Booth, and, yeah, And yeah. Uh, there was another one in the, in the finals, too. But um, but Claude said that's probably the hardest I've ever really? seen a guy wow, get hit. Cool. I mean, you saw the hit. It yep. was... Well, Risto jumped right back yeah, up, man. Did, yeah. <laughs> Nothing happened. So, um, but yeah, uh, anyway, lose that game and then lose to the Lightning last night, 6-3. So, Torts will get him, you know, I'm sure... I don't know if he gave him a day off today, but uh, hopefully he get everything going back in. You know, a couple of injuries, tips out, and obviously the, with, with Carter being gone, that's that's not good. But uh, Sam's going to be carrying the load here, and uh, hopefully we can get back on the winning streak. Yeah, I think they just need a you know a little pause and reset. I think there's just a lot of yeah. uh, emotions, maybe a little fatigue, um, you know, d- down a body or two there. Just yeah, we we. We've, just, it's, it's, Part of the part yeah, of the season, right? Exactly. It's just, we, we talked about this last week, right? Exactly. It's like the adversity. It's yep. just, you know staying healthy. It's just, but I think you know, it's hard to play the way they're playing. We've said that it's a it's a long season, and they you know they show up every night, and it's a tough way to to win games the way they have to play mm-hmm. with the team. Um, but you know, a little adversity right now. Let's see see how they come back this weekend. So yeah, that's um, all you can do. Cam Atkinson's. Pretty hot. He's staying hot. Mm-hmm. I think Baller nice said he's him. got 10 points in his last six games, so uh, hopefully he stays hot. It's, um, it's hard to believe a guy like that can go 26 games I, without a snipe. It's wild. I mean, it really I didn't realize just it was that big just, of a number, but oof, I mean. He's around that net. He gets in the dirty area. He, he does everything. It just you, You're right, man. It's it's crazy that he could go that long, but uh, it's nice to see him yep. get hot here. Hopefully he stays hot and we get some wins going again. and. <clears throat> Be nice. Everybody will be happy. Yeah. Yeah, that's the plan. you got to get some guys uh, that been in a little dry spell scoring. You know, yep. for re- re- maybe replacing some goals that maybe Tippy's not going to be yep. squeezing in. Um, yeah. But, yeah, guys go through their droughts. Again, it's hard to believe like a skill guy, 26 games, like you think just by, by – Sheer chance that you would, yeah, something in, but might bounce little, off of you, yeah, right. A little snake bitten, and uh, he's back, he's back, he's back. Let's keep it matters. going, Ken. Yeah, keep it going, exactly. Um, Patrick Wah, did you see that coming? No, hell no, I did not. Um, one of the best goalies ever, mm-hmm. on the island, New yeah. York Islanders, named head coach. Uh, I, I was watching. A lot of TV and reading some articles about it and uh, seeing stuff on social media. They just uh, I guess Lou wasn't didn't feel like the team was performing as as well as they could. He he stepped in there. They got the first win. Uh, they're one and one since he joined the team. So um, <clears throat> we'll see what, see what happens there. Um, I think he's a he's a different style of coach. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think he's I don't want to say in your face, but he's very animated on the bench and yeah. uh, from highly emotional, highly emotional. Um, but maybe that's what they need, you know? So they've got goaltending. We know that. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. It was interesting. I did not see that coming. No, not at all. But I mean, um, he's not had success in coaching junior and you know, he's been obviously in the game since he retired and all that good stuff. But yeah, I just, you know, you think of Patrick Waugh and you just don't, you can never really see him heading in, in, yeah. you know, the Islanders, but yeah, I mean, Sweet Lou does his magic, hey. bringing in some emotion. Yep. Bringing in a new voice. So we'll see how that plays out. I will. Um, Pensy. Oh, Pensy. Pensy. He's Shane back. Pinto back. He's back. <laughs> a little suspy. As, as our boy Dave Boreanaz would say, he's back. A little suspy. That was a long one. <laughs> that was a long he one. He sniped too the other day. He did. I believe G uh, assisted that snipe, eh, baller? Um, yeah, but he he's did. back. So that's, I'm sure it's. 
That was probably a long break for oh, him, man. man. That's just got to be ugh, terrible. And you're not hurt either. I mean, it's, not, it's awful when you're hurt, you're yeah. rehabbing, but there's a reason. Well, yeah. there was a reason, obviously, but anyway, he's back. He's back. He's back. Um, no, who else is back? Yeah, oh, Pear Dogs. Oh, Pearsy. <laughs> Corey Perry is back. He signs with the Edmonton Oilers. It's a great who, pickup. It's a great pickup. little more grit for him. I love um, it. 14 straight. Yeah. Nob that knobber. He just, every week. I feel like it's been about four weeks. Yeah. <laughs> like they're on a roll. 14 games, that's amazing. man. That's 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 unbelievable. But good for them, man. I, I know it just in just in January they've um, they've outscored the teams they played thirty to thirteen. And if you if you look at the issues they have had and, and we've talked about it before, everyone talks about it, is the goaltending. Mm-hmm. The skinner's on fire. Mm-hmm. And they're they've they've cut back. I mean, uh, you know, I don't know what Chuck's doing there, Chris Knobloch. But they've changed something uh, in their game in the defensive end uh, uh, of the ice because they're not giving up what they were, you know, what they were before. I, I was watching last night and it was funny. I'm not sure who was com- uh, commentating the game, but uh, they were like back in the day, Grant Fuhr could let six in, but you know, one of the jokes is always like, uh, "Get me seven, boys, we're good." Yeah, you know, right, like, exactly. and it's it's not like that anymore. Uh, so they're they're just man. They're on fire. Dude. Yeah, you talk about turning that team around. And wow. then, again, like adding Perry, it's yeah. like a perfect guy to add. It is. You know? Yeah, like, it is. Obviously, the veteran presence and the grit. And he can he knows score. how to he can score, he's time won. the goals. He's won. Um, I like it. I do, too. I like where they're going. I would take Corey Perry on my team. Mm-hmm. So. You think he's going back to Chicago? I don't think so. No. 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 He's in Edmonton now. <laughs> He's right where he, right coach, where he belongs. Coach Chip, he told you. <laughs> <laughs> he is in Phil, that Phil Kessel was, Phil was not the call. happy. He wanted to know the intangibles, he <laughs> and he said three cups. Three cups. I got to uh, talk. I haven't talked to Phil in a while. I got to give give uh, Kess a call sometime here. But he's done. No, he's overseas playing. Someone's got to get him at the deadline, Riggs. And he's ready. He told you what his intangibles were <laughs> with Coach Chip. He, three cups. How's he doing? Point what point? Where are you <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> you check out his hockey DB or what? Happened today, not today. I have not. Uh, well, what's he nine points away from a thousand? <laughs> it's eight. <He's laughs> it's eight. eight. Is it eight? In okay. the NHL, yeah. Uh, no, but uh, yeah, great sign. Great signing for the Oilers. Seriously, yep. like uh, he knows how to win. He plays the game the right way. He's old school as hell. He's old school. Um, so pretty interesting. Nast, it's that time. It is. I would say so. I think you're right. I'm excited. Me too. Can't wait for this one. Episode 144. Matthew Barnaby. Matthew Barnaby. Barney. This guy. He, he's not afraid to say what he feels. Oh, he's not afraid. And he wasn't afraid to just do whatever he wanted on the ice either. Oh, but talk I enjoyed about watching him. Man, just turn, <laughs> turn the game in a, in, a, in a millisecond. Yes, he would. And I, I, I think probably one of the best agitator pests. 100%. And guy that not even just a pest like he he would answer the bell he eventually did. exactly like he he wouldn't shy away from the biggest baddest dudes and yeah he took his lumps but it's easy to be a pest than just cower and just turtle but I mean as we see he get he'd get up and yes. go after these guys so oh yeah looking forward to this one can't wait one forty four here we go let's go. Before we get to our interview with Matthew Barnaby, here's a little message from our friends at HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You are totally correct, Riggs. And you should be calling me Chef Nast when I'm handling this HelloFresh. You look good in that apron. I do. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. As you do, Nast. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. Honestly, Riggs, the time you save is unbelievable. It's it's the nights where you're in a rush and you got to do something quick, and it's so helpful and makes everything easier. You don't have to really plan anything out. You know, you've got a 20 minute window, and you got to get your kids to practice. We got the two kids living here. It's uh, it makes everything so much easier. It's quick and easy meals. 15 minute recipe, buddy, and it's on the table, and it's delish. And you look like a champ for preparing it. Each HelloFresh box is packed with farm fresh ingredients and everything arrives pre-portioned right to your doorstep for less hassle and less wasted food. 
And you know I'm a breakfast guy, right? You are. I love breakfast, especially for the kids. Get up. I have a nice little brekkie every day. And the boys <laughs> do too, right before they go to practice. So Nas, all we got to do is go to HelloFresh.com slash KnucklesFree and use code KNUCKLESFREE for free breakfast for life. Can you believe that, Nas? You're a brekkie guy. I am a brekkie guy, and I do believe it because it's true. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash Knuckles Free with code Knuckles Free. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Welcome back. I'm Riley Cote. And I'm Derek Settlemeyer. This week, we are so excited to have this young man with us. Drafted by Buffalo, 1992. Fourth round pick, 83rd overall, Riggs. Two mm-hmm. times this young man led the league in PEMS. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was one of my favorite players to watch. Uh, 14 season in the NHL, man. Uh, 834 regular season games, 300 points, 2,562 PEMS, baby. Not bad. Wore his heart on his sleeve, showed up every night. Mr. Matthew Barnaby. What's up, brother? I, I love being called a young man. That, that is <laughs> probably my favorite thing about doing like alumni events. Yeah. You still get to see like the 60 and 70 year old. And, <laughs> and like yeah. Lanny McDonald will come up to you and be like, hey, kid. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's good. Hey, <laughs> be with you guys. You guys do an unbelievable job listening to you guys all the time. Thank you so uh, much. I uh, So I got to say this real quick before we get going. I don't know if you remember. But my first year in the league, well, actually, you probably wouldn't remember my first year, but I was with the Flyers, like, right when you were coming up. And I used I worked the visiting room for a couple of years. So I was always hanging around you and Razor, because you and I are close in age. Actually, I, yeah. I always say I'm around 40, but we, yeah, we know right. I'm not. <laughs> um, but, like, you are one of my favorite guys, and it used to drive – I just I just loved your game. I just loved everything about you. You are always really good to me. And I loved your game and it would drive our guys nuts because I traveled as well, even though I worked the busy row. It's kind of like, you know, I traveled as well. And I was like, I just loved the shit you would do on the ice and, and you played hard and, and all that stuff. And obviously you were tilling it up with guys. I can't even believe you were dropping your gloves with the balls on you uh, were amazing. But guys would be like, <laughs> stop fucking you're in love with this Barnaby or what, man? I'm like, dude, he's awesome. They're like, he's a fucking dick man. <laughs> because it's just the way you played, obviously. <laughs> But uh, I just wanted to throw that out there real quick. I, I wasn't sure because I wasn't called nasty back then. Uh, I didn't get that nickname for for a few years later. But uh, you probably looked like you're 12 years old. I did. I, I, I honestly, did. I honestly, <laughs> and I, I got a. So the, one of the funniest things is uh, Matthew was uh, the first time I met George Babcock. I don't know this guy from Adam, right? Like I didn't get to meet him when uh, I was in Florida because he didn't travel with Pizza and yeah. um, Rip and Ripper. Because back then there was only like you had a medical and you had your equipment guy. Right. You didn't have a whole lot of assistance back in the day, and when he was, you know, just getting into the league, and uh, so I had to have a guy pick you guys up for me because I was with the team on the road. So the next morning I'm coming over is actually at Hollydale this practice rink, and you guys had practice. Well, the guy that was supposed to bring like the stick tools and the shit, he forgot it. Try to make okay. a long story short. So I get there, I'm this skinny fucker with a with a uh, flat top and glasses comes out and goes, yo, where the fuck are the stick? It's like, just all of my shit. And I'm like, Hey man, good morning. Like, yeah. I don't know him. Right. I knew rip and I knew pizza. I loved pizza. Cause yeah. my dad and him had kind of come up together. And cause my dad was a trainer with the flyers and I'm like, looking at him. I'm like, are you fucking serious right now? I'm like, I, I just got here. I don't know that he, did he not bring him? I'll get some. As me and George almost get in a tilly right away. Now this, you, yeah. you, this guy, you, well. you, you know, George anyway, but I just had to say like, it, it was so funny the first time I met him. Like, so we laughed about it. Now we, we still laugh about it. Cause we were like getting ready to fucking chuck him. But uh, sorry for that long story. Hey. What are you up? What are you up to these days, brother? Yeah. Just, just going back on George. What a beauty when he came to us and he'd do anything to fire us up. We draw during playoffs, like a, uh, a bull bullseye on his back. And literally <laughs> go around the room. He goes, how bad do you want it? And everyone would slap him as hard as they could in the bullseye. And he'd literally have like a welt that thick from hands. Like yeah. just the craziest bastard. Were, were <laughs> you there in 96 when we when I destroyed the room, me and Razor? Yes. And we got the big fines for breaking the TVs. and I, I was... St- 
Yeah. There was a size eight skate in the TV, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> there, there you go. Oh, yeah. George, George says he he's like, I hear this crash. He's telling me the story. I hear this crash, and all of a sudden I hear uh Matthew go, uh George, something's wrong with the TV. And he walks in. <laughs> skate right to yeah, it. Skate right wow. To it. Yeah, That's wild impressive. times. Love I, I I I've said it before many a times. As much as I hated Philly and Philly hated me. There's no other place that I would have rather played, man. What a what a great fan base. I know they're hard. I know they're emotional, passionate. But when you play like we did, like th- yeah. there, there's no better place. There, there's no better yeah. place to go. Yeah, it's surprising you never landed up. In I, play, I, honestly, I, I, really... I have it written down just to say like you would have been so loved here. Like yeah. everybody, like you know, you know, Matthew. You're like you're the guy everyone loved to hate. But when you got on their team, yeah. You know, you see that a lot, but I mean, if you would have played here in Philly, man, it, dude, you would have owned the city oh, like hundred yeah. percent. I, I, yeah. I, I did, I did the, I'm, I'm doing it again March eighth um, for the Flyers alumni. They do that Friday night fight. Oh, are you coming oh, back? Coming? So I'm coming oh, back again this yeah. year. Oh, uh, sweet. I'll <laughs> so, see yeah, you there. It was great, man. It was, it was awesome. And I remember just the first time I'm like, listen, I wanted to be booed when I came in, and I had to apologize to a lot of guys and said. A lot of you guys probably just got married in the last 10 years, but I can guarantee some of your girls were at the Continental back in the day. So. <laughs> yeah, that's Second right. in the market. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's great, man. Yeah, that is great. That's yeah. Great. We, were, we watched at least like 10 of your tellies just against the Flyers this morning. We're yeah. Like, Please, I, 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 was, like, I, said, I said to Riley, I mean, he, he was an undersized guy. Uh, even though you weigh 226, 162, 220, but you know, he's fighting these guys, yeah, 265 pounds. You did the same. I said, you know, uh, and you may, uh, you're not going to remember this, but I remember shooting the shit with you and Razor, and and you were like, I'll fight that big, big 88, I'll fight him, I don't care. And I'm like, Ooh, and you did, <laughs> yeah, and you yeah, did. And did. I mean, you fought all At the 87, big guys. and 87 else, first yeah. year, like, I mean, <laughs> yeah, crazy, they're... crazy. That 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 time and like I played at 190, maybe 192 was my was my max. There's some big guys and l- listen, I guarantee out of those ten, I lost all ten. But it was um, it it was just what we did. We Riley, we we did what we did to make a living to to get where we wanted to be. I mean, we dreamed of this as kids, and the way we were going to do it wasn't by scoring 50 like Pat LaFontaine or, or some of the other stars. So you do anything you do to have success. And I think that's what the, the brotherhood really is when you see each other and you might have hated each other when you played. It's the first guy you reach out to and you're like, man, I love you. Keep up the awesome work, whatever you're doing now. And everyone just has mad respect. It's crazy. Like Stu Grimson and Kelly Chase and some of my best friends now. And the stuff, the, the shit I used to tell them, about the families and <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it's the weirdest fucking thing. Like the Grim Reaper, I see him now, and he's like, "Hey, sweet boy." Like I'm like, "How's your kids?" I'm like, "This guy used to tell me he was gonna fucking rip my ears right off my face," and now I'm like, I get a text after after Friday night fights. He's like, "Hey, sweet boy, just want you to know I love you. Stay safe." I'm like, "That's awesome, man." What yeah. the fuck world do we live in? Yeah, I know, right? I know. Well, yeah. you, you said it though. The respect. Yeah, man. It's exactly like, that. It, it it it's deserved well well deserved as yeah. well um so so what what are you up to these days i know you have your podcast yeah podcast plug that? uh I, I travel a lot uh i travel probably too much uh me and my wife are always always seems like we're somewhere uh actually next week and i head to finland probably to see my son he plays hockey over there and my daughter's a flight attendant so i get to meet her uh along the way and and, and travel and uh, I was working with a betting company, but that just ended because of regulations that they have in Ontario. So I'm big into the betting uh, betting industry. Uh, yeah. But yeah, besides that, public speaking events and and a lot of travel and trying to trying to keep this body from falling apart. Yeah. <laughs> As we all are, right? Yeah. The, you're, the yeah. joys of getting older. Your yeah. uh, your your son Matthew, uh, bit of a sniper. Yeah. Yeah. Complete polar opposite players. He's He's 6'3", skilled center. Um, he's got a mouth as bad, if not worse, than me. <laughs> oh, okay, uh, just, okay. Yeah, it doesn't have the doesn't have the doesn't have the jam like the way that I I played the game, but I didn't have what he has. So he's right. forging his own uh, thing, and there's nothing 
nothing better than seeing your kid play hockey and That's follow true. his dreams. And even though it's cold and the food is shitty in Finland, he's having a great time. He said, Tinder in Finland is much better than Fort Wayne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I bet. I bet. I'm sure. I mean, as a uh, quick question about that, too, because we, we had some questions uh, earlier that we had to answer about uh, your kids growing up. Was it something you had to like talk to him about because, you know, you were a certain type of player? Did you see in him there's more skill or, uh, you know, be your own player? Be your own player, basically, is what I'm asking. Is that did yeah? You have to... He he was born in '98, and, and it was still a tough league back then. But you could start to see that it was it was it was going a different way. And I, listen, I didn't. I loved what I did. Right, we loved what we did and how we did, and 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 the accolades and the fans chanting your name, awesome. It's not it. It's not what you want for your kids. That's right. right. Well, it, what we do for ourselves is completely different than what we would want for our kids. We want them to have a better life. So it's not what I wanted to have him deal with every single day. And I just, he was a skilled player, but he, he just had more skills. So we really emphasized on skill work since he was very, very young. And like I said, I uh, love watching him play. And I've seen him fight a couple of times. Never really got nervous in a fight. I got nervous like in, in the pregame naps and, you know, yeah. sweating and knowing, you know, is he a lefty? Is he a righty? You know, you're going to break my jaw tonight, whatever it may be. And you're preparing for it, right? So that those nerves happen there. Once I got into a game, I, I was never nervous. Watching your son fight and take a punch. Oh, your yeah. heart yeah. comes out. Like you want to cry. Yeah. You're watching your kid do it. So I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad he's a skill player. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. A little sure. different perspective. And then, uh, you know, building on that, I wanted to ask you, like, we, we kind of, like, only knew what we knew and, and did what we had to do, right? I mean, you, you were fighting in juniors. You had four years of, yeah. you know, clearly over 200 yeah. pims a year. And, like, how early did you realize you had to, to be this guy, this character? Yeah, to, I was a skilled guy growing up. I was a smaller guy until I was – and I say smaller. I was really small. Like, at 15, I was, like, five foot two. 100 oh, really? pounds. I was I was Jesus. tiny. I, sure. I didn't hit puberty till I was literally almost 17. So I went to junior. I was drafted last overall in the Quebec League. And after two days, I was like, fuck, these guys are bigger. They're stronger. They're faster. I, I think I have as much skill, but I just can't. I can't do anything out there. And I, I told my brother and my mom, you know, don't 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 come to training camp. I'm probably going to get cut any any day or so. My brother didn't mean for me to fight or, or do anything. He just said, do something to stand out. And it really resonated. And the next day I was like sitting on the bench. I'm like, fuck this. I'm going to get all I have. I'm going to get cut. And the next two days I fought like 13 times and lost. No shit. Yeah. Like Jesus, like got killed. I mean, I got beat up. I went after the biggest guy. The guy's name was Guy Lafave. It'll never, it, yeah, never, never, ever, it. <laughs> ever forget his name. And the coach came up to me after day two. He's like, dude, you, you do not have to. You've proven you want to be here. He goes, you might not be in the lineup every single night, but we were an expansion team. And he goes, we we want that kind of character. So you might not play every night. You not might not play a lot. It, it, it is what it is. And I played every game. I didn't play a lot uh, in my first year. Um, had like 252 PIMS. Uh, then the next year he made me assistant captain and, then I was on a draft list for the NHL, which would just blew my mind because I thought I was going to get cut the year before. And I had 476 minutes that year. So it was like, <laughs> you know, a culmination of things. And it just really worked out that, you know, like when you have a coach that believes in you, right? Yeah, it, it's just, it, it's so much more. And, and the confidence just grows. And because of Alan Shaney, the coach that I had in, in Quebec City, uh, my confidence just grow. And then I, my body started, you know, my first year was 148 pounds in junior Second year, 165, then 170. And the stronger you get for kids out there, you know, work on your skills and you never know when you're going to grow, but just, just get stronger. And that's, that's where the confidence comes from. Yeah, yeah. No, no. that sounds like uh, Marty Biron's uh, draft weight. He's in those low weights. I'm like, wow, that's pretty light. <laughs> hey, we, we're, we're this guy to see naked though. He's like 112 pounds. <laughs> And he's, and he's got a hammer. Yeah, I, I just saw Marty last week. We were in Buffalo. My son played in a, a tournament there. Uh, he's My son's only nine. And unfortunately, okay. he's a goalie, uh, which is not what I wanted. But uh, he loves it. But I saw, I got to see, Marty was on air. And he goes, I said, where are you? He goes, I have to do intermissions. And then I'm, I'm fine. And I said, well, okay, we'll, we'll come around and see you real quick. Because he saw like a post that one of our 
guys that does our social media posted yeah, yeah. that I was there with my son. So he, Marty goes, you're here and you don't call me. And I said, bro, I said, I, I, I figured you're working. So he actually came up to our section and hung out. Oh, in the street cool. and, and people great. walking by and you know, Marty, you can't even get a word in with, with Marty. <laughs> he's like, tell me and he's animated and he's got the makeup on. I'm just, I said, look at you. What do you cut your hair, man? But uh, oh, yeah. it was good. It was good to see Marty, but you're right. <laughs> you're right. There, there's no guy in the world that can't speak English. And he won't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> That's a true. He loves it. I love it. He, lo- he loves it. But yeah, he was I, awesome. I, I just wanted to go back to uh, your, your junior hockey career there. So, you, you know, obviously you're an emotionally charged guy. You were, you really weren't like that at all before you, you decided to, to, to take on that role. I, I would say I was an instigator. Like I, I've always had the personality of like trying to get under my buddy's skin and, and joking them and antagonistic, but I, I just didn't have any body frame, nor did I think. And I would, Again, we were all the best player on our teams growing right. up, right? Like, we all scored 150 points in Pee Wee. Like, everyone, everyone did that. Yeah. But I I was always antagonistic, and it's always been pers- part of my personality. It's still my personality. I love when my friends rip me. I love ripping my friends, um, all all in good fun. But no, it, I, wasn't, I wasn't a fighter growing up at all. It was literally a new identity was born after my third day of junior. Wow, that's, that's, cr- that's crazy. And he just took it to a whole other level. I mean... I was saying to Nasty, like, I don't think there was like a bigger pest agitator to ever play the game. I mean, like, you really owned that. Yeah, you, you you literally, I feel like you changed games, man, because you, you had, you would get guys so rattled. And I, and it, like I said, our guys would like get me like that fucker's smiling and shit. And I'm like, (laughs) and it's working. Yeah. I mean, it's working because I haven't got a hand job like this. Uh, oh, since, since my <laughs> wife last week. This is this is good for my confidence. <laughs> Boost you up uh, a little, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Just give me a little side one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, you always want to try to affect a game, whether it's through a fight or score a goal. You want to have a positive impact on your team. And for me, like, yeah, I could fight, but sometimes I would. It's not that I wouldn't fight but I want to piss people off so much and go after Lindros or whoever it may be, or go after a star player where the tough way would come after me and then punch me. And I, I, I would turtle and people would say, Oh, you, you were tur-. I'm like, I was just trying to set up a power play for our team to score. And then I would have no problem with fighting the guy later on. But if, if I could positively affect the game by drawing a penalty and I score a goal, then I felt like I did my job because right. I might not win the fight. And especially if you're in another team's building and you're in Philadelphia, the last thing you want to do is give them momentum right. by losing a fight early in the game. Now, sometimes it had to happen, whatever it may be. And I always felt obligation if I turtled and we drew a penalty and we scored. Listen, I, I, I pulled my teeth out. I had fake teeth when Kerry Fraser during the playoffs and pulled it out because <laughs> I got high sticks. And I tried that same thing like the next game, but we scored <laughs> in, in overtime. It was just just a funny, funny sequence. Uh, but you're always trying to try trying to be a difference maker, however that that may be. And in Philadelphia, it just seemed like the perfect spot every time. Yeah. And a lot of like I, I remember some of my teammates, and I don't want to I don't want to bring their names into it because they weren't the toughest, but they would be like, "Hey, don't start anything tonight." And they were like, "I play with." two pretty skilled guys at the time. And I like, don't say that. Cause that's <laughs> don't, now, don't tell me that. <laughs> Doubling down. Yeah. Yeah. The fire. Yeah. We're getting yeah. going. And they'd be like, Oh no, just grabbing on the seat belts are, are wild on. And it's funny. Cause I've become really good friends with Rick Tockett now. And we had five on five brawls with them during the playoffs. And yeah. just so many great memories um, of going into Philadelphia. Just, just awesome. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, you're uh your your debut, you guys have something in common. I don't know if you know this. His first game, he it worked out perfect. Puck comes around, Sean Hill, yeah. and he just beelines and and great hit leads to him getting a fight. Your first fight was against Sean Hill. Yeah, uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, did you ask him how that all come about? Like, did you just go after him? Yeah, it was it was my first game. I got called up from Ottawa. We didn't have the Ottawa Senators back then, so Montreal was my favorite team. Uh, growing up and I, I think the big thing coming out of junior and, and even though like Brashear was there, Gino Ojic, uh, it, it, it was done. Like it, it was, it was a tough, tough league, but when you go to the NHL and guys do this for a living, 
at my size, I don't know if everyone believed that I would still be the same kind of player or, or shy away because it happens to some guys. They, they fight in junior and they come up and they just don't want to do it anymore against real men that are doing it for hundreds of thousands and even millions of dollars. So when we were playing Montreal, it, there was no doubt that I was getting in a fight in my <laughs> first game. It, it, it right. was going to happen whether we were up, whether we were down. And I just went after him. He kind of cross-checked me a little. I kind of cross-checked. It wasn't much of a fight at all, but uh, it, it was something that I had to do. And then my next game was against Philadelphia. Ryan McGill. In the odd, uh, mm-hmm. Ryan McGill. And it's kind of holding on. He headbutted me at the end of it, but it was, uh, right. it was funny. Yeah, I was, I was fighting in every game that I got into that season. Uh, yeah. to start just so they knew like I or at least because it was at the end of the year I was called up from junior when we got knocked out I just wanted to like set a standard that I would I would be tough to cut the next year essentially right mm-hmm. right yeah because because Gilly ended up uh, he was tossed for intent to injure from the head but I, yeah. I I actually remember that I actually saw Gilly he's an assistant coach now with the Devils yeah. I had a couple beers with him a few weeks ago um, great guy. There. Yeah, he, great he really, guy. he really is. He's yeah. a, he's a good dude. I, re- I remember one time, uh, Matthew, uh, we were, were struggling. It was my first year here in Florida or Florida in uh, Philly it was 94, 95 it was the half season. Hmm. And it was before Gilly got traded to Edmonton and we weren't, we had a tough start and he and Hexy were the only two guys left after practice. They were just finishing up and Gilly's like walking out the door and he stops. He goes, Hey Hex, let's get something fucking going tomorrow night. And then we actually, and they did, they both did, you know, oh, Hexy sure. probably slashed on and then Gilly somebody. came flying in and, oh, yeah. and uh, all that. But uh, yeah, he, he was like, he was, he's a really good guy. He was, a, you know, he, he did everything he could to help the team and yeah. he used to chuck him quite a bit. So. Yes. Speaking of goalies, I mean, you, you had your fair share of goalie fights. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> one by one. <laughs> Bullshit. I, 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 I should have had a few more fights with goalies. It was great. And yeah, Sean Burke was always one of those guys. He was a lot like Hexty. Uh, he'd love to get in it. He loved to throw the blocker. Snowy, I had fought. Uh, that's probably the thing I get asked about the most is the, is the snow fight. And you know, I'd fought him the year before in when he was at Cornwall in the minors oh yeah or a couple yeah. Of years before and i just remember being on on the ice and i got hit pretty hard like i, I had the wind knocked out of me when i got cross-checked i think it was a sean antoski that that had hit me yeah and then yep. brad may came in like frank jimmy Sn- snooker fly snooker man <laughs> yeah. rope, Top jumped rope. On, and you always know who's out there with you you know who's out there on the other team as you had to be prepared every time you went on the ice and i was laying there and i was a little hurt but i wasn't that hurt and pizza comes onto the ice and I'm like, hey, what's going on? He's like, it looks like there's like a five on five going on out. I'm like, okay, so I'm just going to lay here for a bit because I know Snowy's going to come over. I said, just be ready. He's yeah. going to come over. He's going to either say something or he's going to do something. And within five seconds, he comes over and he just kind of jabs. It tickles jabs your armpit in. there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I don't even know what he said. Uh, I'm guessing he called me a pussy or something like that, whatever. Yeah. Um, and, and honestly, like, why do you call guys like pussies? Like, like that's like, you know how tough a pussy is? <laughs> like, the beating a pussy can take and a human comes out of the thing. Like, if, if someone calls me a pussy now, I'm like, yeah, I'm tough. I got it. <laughs> well, that shit gets beaten to hell. Oh, like, my God. Like, beaten to hell. So I, I, I just said, be prepared. I'm going to jump up and I'm going to fucking throttle him like i'm i'm gonna unleash because no one can come in and like i knew it he comes in and gave him a pretty good yeah <laughs> licking cuts. um and then brenda moore comes in like he should and then we fight and uh strong as can be not the best fighter in the world right. but a great, great teammate probably a hall of famer uh but yeah it was it, it it was just a big start to the rivalry uh which i absolutely loved yeah, that's amazing. It, 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 it's crazy. I, I pizza. I got to bring pizza up one more time and, and tell you this real quick. Uh, <clears throat> so my first year I'm in Florida. Him and my dad have known each other, right? So pizza's like, like just super nice to me and and Ripper. But like I'm hanging. We're in Miami because the the Panthers played in Miami. Um, so we're down there all day and and pizza's like talk to me. So he says, hey who you guys got down there? And, you know, pizza's the guy I told you about would make the, the road. Oh, the roads. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Don he, King, uh, man. Yeah. Don yeah. King, this guy. So listen to what he does to me. I'm fuck, I'm 20. I just out of college. I just finished college. I'm 22. It's my first year. Yeah. I've been around the game because of my dad, but I, you know, I lived in North Carolina, so I was 
back and forth. It wasn't like I was there every day. So pizza says to me, like, who do you guys got over there? And I was like, uh, it's like, we got Paul Laws is pretty tough. He, you know, he fights a bit and, um, and he was really tough actually. Yeah. And we great. had Brent Severn, but I think at the, I don't know if Sevy was there yet. Cause it was pretty early. But anyway, he goes, you think, uh, L- uh, Laos could take, uh, Mayday. And I'm like, well, I don't know. Yeah, maybe like, I guess we'll see if, you know, if they go. So fast forward a few couple hours, I hear this Michael Jackson music, just blaring. <laughs> and you know, I know, you know, <laughs> bro. So I love Michael Jackson. Oh, yeah. And I, me and Ray Emery, by the way, the first time he came to Philly, like when yeah. he first joined the team, we had a dance off that night. Oh, yeah. uh, Michael Thank Jackson dance off. Cause I can, I, I can dance like Michael, believe it or not. Anyway, <laughs> I hear this Michael Jackson music playing and it's in the arena and I'm down on the Panthers locker room and I can hear this. It's blaring. So I like start following the music and I'm, going to your guys' locker room, and you guys are all napping, uh, you know, whatever, lunch. This guy's, like, walking and doing his Michael Jackson hand. And I'm oh, like, yeah. I so I walk in right away. I give the kick. And he goes, <laughs> oh, you want some of this? So him and I are having a, a well, fucking dance-off in the, in the Sabres locker room, and we just start laughing. And then that's when he, he asked me about uh, Laos and everything. So fast forward, the boys come in, you know, having their coffee, getting their sticks ready. He goes, hey, he goes, Sudsy, because my, my dad's nickname is Sudsy. A lot of the older guys call, yep. call me that as well. He goes, Sudsy, come here. And it's uh, it's Razors in there and, and Brad May, right? So he goes, uh, why don't you tell uh, Brad May here what you said earlier? And I'm like, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> he goes, oh, you said that Laos had kicked the shit out of him. I said, well, well, and, it, and, so Brad, and so Brad's like looking at me like he's mad. And, you know, I'm new. Like, yeah, this is like my first year. And I'm like, oh, assassin. shit. And I'm like, well, he goes, did you say it? I said, well, I said, I think he could probably take you. And he goes, it's okay, brother. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like shitting myself. And, and Ray's are standing there staring at me, too. And then did they all start it? laughing. Yeah. I'm like, fuck you guys, man. We, we, we had a fucking disco ball in our training room. Oh, for pizza? Yeah. Oh, Michael yeah. Jackson was playing all the time. All the he'd time. always do that. And he'd come back. He'd come back with the game sheet. And he'd be like, Barney, you got, you, you, <laughs> you got McGratton or you, you got Peter Worrell. Razor, you got Laos. And he'd be like, all right. And, like, and he's like, well, it's not done. He goes, who do you got in the second period? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> I, I'm like, you have the best job in the world. Oh, and my you're God. just setting up fights. <laughs> That's uh, so he good. did do that. He, he was awesome. Though. You have the robe as well? Locker? So I did get the robe. It was uh, it was actually a Sports <laughs> Illustrated issue with how oh. I was going to get the robe. Um, but yeah, he gave it the other. The other I, I think Pat Lafontaine might have got one that wasn't a fighter, and Dominic Hasek got one uh, for obviously all 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 the reasons that his stats are pretty pretty incredible. But yeah, it was it was a big thing in the room, and guys would wear it around, and yeah, it was pretty awesome. Yeah, I remember seeing those. Um, the uh, I was a real quick question. Uh, you you know you were thirty six there. Were you assigned that, or was that a number you picked? No, I was just just training camp number. Yeah. And okay. Then when I came up at the end of the year, they gave me they gave me thirty six, and I wore fourteen in junior, but I wore nine growing up. Uh, okay. And nine wasn't taken. Well, fourteen was ended. Dave Hannon, but it ended up being retired. Uh, and then nine became available. A guy named Victor Gordiak, who was a really skilled russian kid and he didn't make the team the next year and pizza came to me he goes nine's available if you want and i was like yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll take nine and then i slept on it that night i'm like you know what like a bunch of people had already bought my jerseys yeah i'm like why am i gonna change the nine i'll just i'll wear 36 and just stuck so it's uh it's one of those crazy numbers i never would have picked 36 um never wanted my son to wear 36 and my son <laughs> always wore nine growing up or 89 okay. 91 and he always said, I always said, like, I want you to form your own identity. Um, and I'm like, you know, it's pretty cool. Like three plus six equals nine, nine yeah. sort of thing. And, and it's a skill number. So he's always been nine if he can get it. 91 cool. this year. But uh, yeah, just assigned to me. Yeah. I just wonder because, you know, sometimes they, you know, some guys like a weird, like a different number that you wouldn't now, normally. You rocked it well. I got it fucking tattooed all over my fucking Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a little awesome. reminder. Yeah, I was. I wanted to ask you. Um, I think this goes back to maybe a year ago or maybe two. Um, you know, a, a little riff you had online with, uh, I guess, Sean Avery. Uh, what 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 happened there? In and I think you were 
you know, challenging him to yeah. uh, maybe sign a contract. You wanted to sign a contract in the coast, and yeah, <laughs> so, I, I, it came I up. Was, I was laying in bed. He he's a guy I've never met in my life. Oh shit! Okay, but I, I I've I've heard a lot of bad things about him from trainers, the way he treats them, and we've played in some of the same places, but I've never never played with him, never met him. Challenged him to a fight on the ice a bunch of times, this and that. I've said some nasty things to him that he alluded to, I guess, in his book, which I haven't read. Uh, but I'm laying in bed. It's 10 o'clock at night. I'm watching, like, Law and Order. My wife's sleeping on my chest. And I'm just strolling through Twitter with, with my left hand and rubbing her head, trying to get a little more, but it didn't work. It didn't work. <laughs> and, and I'm scrolling through, and I'm like, Sean Avery signs with the Orlando Solar Bears. And I just tapped my wife. I'm like, going back to playing hockey. <laughs> <laughs> and she kind of wakes up. She's like, what, what do you mean? I'm like, I'm going back and I will sign for free with any of these teams for two games. But it has to be at our home rink. And, and I'm sure we'll sell out the stadium and we'll donate the money to charity. So I, I sent this out. I, I tweeted out. I said, anyone in the Southeast Division wants to sign me. It has to be two games at home against... Orlando coming up. Da, da, da. She's like, you haven't skated in like a year and a half. I'm like, fuck, give me a week. I said, I'm not going to be playing a regular shift. Yeah. <laughs> I just got to throw some bombs. Yeah. yeah. And I go, I just can't do it this week because I'm going to Cancun. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but Sorry, I had talked to like three or four teams and probably would have got something done with one of them. Uh, but he went for two days and obviously was cut. But I would have loved one last chance to to get at him and then oh, wow. i challenged him to a rough and rowdy too like yeah i fighting. remember that yeah he, he's he's not fighting yeah well i, th I thought i thought he would uh, take you up on that challenge it, it looks like he's been uh doing some jujitsu a little yeah a little grappling so i thought maybe you know like oh, what, what's he got to lose i mean yeah you know it's like but I, if we're gonna do mma i need i probably need a year yeah uh speaking of books you, you just said his you you had a book come out uh 2022 if i'm not mistaken uh, yeah. unfiltered uh, it's available on amazon yes you, jeffrey bezos has absolutely everything <laughs> uh, <laughs> everything uh yeah it was it was it was cool i always wanted to write a book and and through covid I finally had the time. It takes a lot of time to sit there and, and get your words. And I had a ghostwriter for about half of it. And then I wrote half of it by myself. Obviously, a lot of spelling and, and punctuation. <laughs> I needed some help with when it was all said and done by the editors. But it, it was therapeutic. It was fun. I, I also wanted to, like, to clear up a lot of things. Like I got in a fight in, in Nashville in a bar. And I just wanted people to hear my side of the story. Um, the media, a lot of times they're they're right but a lot of times they don't get the whole story and right, right. and you know the, the one thing that sucks when you're when you're in the media and i've made some mistakes and i own up to all my mistakes and you know it was almost an apology to my kid for some of the things uh that i've done as well but you don't always get the full story and right. writing a book i was able to tell my side of the story um even when i was wrong why why things happened uh, and it, it, it was just a lot of fun. It, it was, it was, it was tough. It was the hardest thing I've had to do, uh, but it was therapeutic and fun. And it was, uh, it, it was, a, it, I would never do it again. I, I, yeah. I it's a lot of time. Yeah. A lot yeah of time. Sure. But, uh, yeah. but I'm glad I did it. Yeah. That's awesome. No, I like that you made the point around like maybe resolving, you know, question marks around stories, especially for your children. Like you, you know, you, yeah. you want to be truthful and you, you, you want to like, you obviously want to teach teach them the lessons you can teach and 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 maybe help them avoid mistakes that you made like how much of that i mean because again like you're an animated character guy yeah. and like you obviously you, your personality naturally would rub off on your children to some degree but like but there's obviously like you've matured and like i, I mean how, how does those conversations go as you're you're, you're essentially raising one hockey player in that culture yeah. that we live in but like that that boundary of like respect and you know all yeah, I, I, I would just, if I could say anything to any parent out there, just be honest with them. Yeah. And we all, we all make mistakes. There's, there's right. no perfect person in this world. And if you make a mistake, Hey, just, just own up to it and move yeah. on and find, find a way around it. So there is a chapter in the book where I, you know, say this book literally is, is for them and I've made mistakes and, um, but love you as a dad, you're, you're my greatest pride and joy. There's, 
I, I would trade the money. I would trade the, 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 the so-called fame or notoriety to be your dad. And that, that'll never change. There's nothing I wouldn't do for them. And they, and they know that. And I, you know, along the way through that, there's a lot of funny stories in the book of being on the road and, you know, getting drunk inside a Chicago hotel, which is one of the nicest in the league and shit in your pants because you're, you got roofied, you think, <laughs> by someone and, and you're naked coming up to the counter, like stuff like that. And yeah, fun nights I had with different guys. Not that any of these, like I would never ever sewer any of uh, any of my friends. So it, it, the book starts out essentially Law and Order is my favorite show. I said that earlier. <laughs> and and it, it literally starts out a lot of the places and people's names have changed but the story is true dun, dun, dun. it's it's so funny you say that because i like i was i was in it for uh 20 what, 27 years so obviously you know i was so lucky to be in it that long and to be around the boys and you guys always it's just a thing in hockey where we we were treated like gold from you know 95 percent of, of of players and you guys always looked after us so we you know, we go out and, you know, you can tell your buddy's stories, but like, they're like, oh, yeah. you should tell that one. I'm like, yeah, can't. I can't. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can't throw guys under the bus. Yes, I could write a book. Fucking. Oh, yeah. Five thousand. You could too. Oh, yeah. Like 5,000 pages long, but I'm like, it's just shit. You, you can't do it. Hey, I'm, just, I'm just one player you met along the way and you probably brought me 14, 24 packs of Coors Light onto the bus. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, like. The, 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 the stuff you tell, like I can tell my buddies and I know it's, I know it's going nowhere, but even when I do like these events, I, I tell funny stuff, Yeah, but I'm never like 95% of the shit, like a normal, like I'm going to say normal person, like right. your accountant or your lawyer. <laughs> yeah. They, they can't comprehend yes. the story. Uh, yeah. I, and I, I, like, this, exactly. this is made up. I'm like, dude, this is. This is the PG. PG, Yeah, I was gonna say. (laughs) I was gonna say, like, you know, like sitting in our men's league, we play men's league together. You know, like guys are always asking questions, or or we get into a story just because someone mentions a guy, and I'm like, oh my god! So you know, tell tell the story, like you said, and they're like, no fucking way. I'm like, boys, like, trust me, (laughs) it's real. (laughs) You'll love this. We we know Jim McKenzie is known for the biggest dick in the NHL history, right? Yes. Yeah. The guy's got a hedgehog. I don't know Jim McKenzie for the life of me. I've never met him. I've never fought him. He was a monster. He was super tough. Two years ago, and I'm going uh, next week to Mike Keene's event in Winnipeg. I finally meet Jim McKenzie. (laughs) And he's heard this, I'm sure, a million times from different guys. I shake his hand. I give him a hug. He's like, hey, Matt, nice to meet you. I'm like, hey, Jim, nice to meet you. I go, is it that big? And he's like... (laughs) It is. And then Mike Keene's like, <laughs> <laughs> it is. You can vouch. Yeah. So, so the weekend goes along. I play my last game with my team and I, I put, grab my little overnight kit. I throw the towel over my shoulder and I'm walking down. My team goes, where are you going? I go, I got to see it. <laughs> and Jim was, Jim just finished his last game. I go, I walk into his room. Like, what are you? I said, me and Jimmy were showering. <laughs> He's like, are you serious? He goes, you're fucked up. I go, hey, I've heard about this for 25 years. Yeah. Yep. I go, get in the shower. So he gets in the shower. I go to take my towel off. I'm like, he's like, where are you going? I go, I'm not showering beside that. <laughs> oh, my God. Was cold. He's just an awesome guy. It's just, oh, you know, but it, it is not a myth. That is a legend. It's true. Mark, Mark, Greg, monster. Mark Greg played in Hartford with him. And he oh, yeah. came up one day and he goes, boys, you, you just don't, um, you can't understand it. It's just no. not normal. It's no, not normal. No. It, it, oh, it's really man. humbling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That's oh, great. Man. Uh you know, I just thought of something. Uh, I was talking to Jory. I was in Buffalo last week. Um your I think your rookie year, you play in an M- MSG and you go to put your clothes on, and I think they were hanging in the rafters or something, and you <laughs> had yeah. to go get it. To- it was actually like one of my, it was, I was called up at the end of the year when we, uh, we had, we had played Jersey. Uh, well, the first, first time I was called up, I was in the minors. I was up and down my whole first year pro. And like, I called up for, for playoffs and it was in Jersey at the old continental center. Oh, or, okay. Okay. Whatever, whatever it was. So black aces, I, I'm skating, even though I'm part of the team, I'm skating with the black aces after 
after uh, just to stay in shape. So I'm skating and I see all the team just looking up and laughing. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? So I look up and the highest point, the highest point in the building, there's my pants hanging. <laughs> and Pat LaFontaine had paid the guy like $100 to go put it up. Took me like an hour and a half after practice to go get my stuff. And Oh, my God. But payback's always a bitch. Yeah. yeah. Tenfold. Oh, I'm sure you did. And, and you know what? People would be like, oh, my God, weren't you mad? I'm like, dude, like, they wouldn't do it if they didn't appreciate that I was on the team. Like, I would never do something like that unless I love the guy. I'm not going to do it to a kid that can't handle it. Or right. it's making me – it made me feel part of the team, which was right. Awesome. Yeah. Was yeah. Like, for um, sure. Maybe we're the complete opposite. Maybe we're the ones that are fucked up. But it, to me, that's it was like, oh my god, that's hazing. I'm like, that's not hazing. Ha- hazing is taking a broomstick and 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 doing shit and and yeah, like really taking a guy down or abusing him. This was fun. It it was fun, and I it it really was like, oh my god, I, these guys think enough of me to make a joke. Like, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, I'll your shoelaces. I'll I'll cut your dress shirts. I'll I'll take a shit <laughs> in your shoe. I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One of my favorite pranks. We were we were in Chicago at Christmas. Marty Lapointe was my my roommate, and we had a Christmas party, like December twenty first, whatever it was. And Chicago's were like it was it was a restaurant, and the other half was like separated with like just a clothing store, and it was women's clothing. And me and Marty were like, oh, let's do a joke. We're drunk. We're like, let's go. So we come in. We got like these crop top shirts and skirts, and we're <laughs> dancing on the dance floor with the wives, and they're having a great time. Whatever. So Todd Simpson and Jimmy Dow, these guys go into our locker and, and steal all our clothes. So now we're leaving at night oh, and it's fucking cold. Like we got no jacket, no nothing. So we're driving home, get stopped by the cops. He's like, my wife's driving. And he's like, why aren't you wearing clothes? And we're like, oh, Chicago Blackhawks, we had a Christmas party. They stole our clothes. He's like, oh, good, good prank, whatever. So yeah. <laughs> me and Marty the next day, I'm like, Marty, like we got to get him back. So. We jump off the ice early, tell the coach, hey, we got to get off the ice. Get off the ice. We take everyone's fucking clothes, the whole team. We take the the equipment van because we aren't playing for a week. We throw it all in there. We got their wallets, their cell phones, oh, their keys, my God. everything. We park it like a mile behind a the school. They can't find their keys. Now, they got some people have doctor's appointments. Some people got to pick their kids up. They got to go get groceries. <laughs> they got this and that. We go home. We open up a cup couple of bottles of wine at the house and you've seen the movie seven where they piece together like all oh yeah cryptic mm-hmm. and we just get there early and we leave it right in the middle of like all the clues on where to get it took them three days to find their fucking stuff their no way so sour with us so oh sour. my god <laughs> three days that's, no keys wallet no cell phone oh man how are they with that yeah <laughs> no, not, good. <laughs> <laughs> not good not good but me and marty were the two toughest on the team so it was okay yeah, yeah. oh wow oh, that's great that would be something oh. yeah some tells me you're probably up to uh, up to those little tricks all the time you know like knowing, knowing how you played yeah you gotta have fun you gotta keep yeah, it loose sure, and, yeah it's a joy to go on the rink. It's, it's it's such a long, like, it, it, it's a fun year, but it's a long year. You know, yeah. like there's, especially when you get into January and February after that All-Star break, and then you get revitalized in, in March when playoffs start coming again. Like, there's points in the year you just get so excited about Christmas to see you spend time with your family and get a little break, All-Star break. And it, it's 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 a long year. It's a long year. And and I I, I just think levity and – and people having fun or some like when I went to Colorado with Sackick and Adam Foot, like these guys had a great time. But when you when you're ready to play, like you better be ready to play. You better be ready. Mm-hmm. Like play, yeah. go out as much as you want, but do not bring the team. If you bring the team down, you're you're going to be gone. Like you're going to yeah. be gone. So do what all you right. have to do, whatever that is. But when it comes time to play the game, man, leave it all out there. Yeah. No, that's a great philosophy. Old yeah, school philosophy. Yeah, it's old school. Yeah, you're right. And that was this is I mean, a good day. I hate sound like an old fuck, but this just it was just so <laughs> hey, much we're fun. Back. I yeah. know, I know. It was just so much fun. And, and even up to I've been out what three years now. It was still fun. Like we were yeah. I've I've been known to do a few pranks. I, yes, I you have like to scare people, but it uh anyway, I was gonna uh ask you about <clears throat> coaches. Uh you had Torch as an assistant, I believe. Um, how did you like Torch? I mean, that's been a long time ago, but yeah, how did you like Torch? You know what? Torch Torch is a great guy. He's uh he's the only guy that's ever told me that he likes dogs. 
more than humans. <laughs> oh, um, he does. I actually had him as a coach in Tampa. And oh, we, that's, right. that's right. Yeah. He's one of the smartest coaches I've ever had. We, we didn't, we didn't get along per se. We didn't fight. Um, or he just didn't think I could play in the league. And they had just signed me to a three-year deal worth pretty good money at the time. And I, I just didn't play. I was playing like three to six minutes a night. It was, oh, it was man. hard. And I just moved to Tampa. I just got traded there, just built a house. Uh, but he, he didn't play me. He, he didn't okay. play me. And I said, well, will you trade me? He goes, just go ask the GM. He goes, yeah. He goes, you're, you're not, I, I just don't think you can skate well enough to play her. And the one thing I always say, I respect him because most people wouldn't be honest. Most coaches right. give you the runaround. Torch yeah. was very, very honest. And he's hard to play for. He's he's really hard to play for. But he demands a lot. He demands you play the right way. I think sometimes he goes about it the wrong way. But I really like what he's done in Philadelphia. And yeah. I have nothing but respect for him in the fact that he was honest with me. I got traded to New York literally a week later. And I had three of the best years uh, of my life. And one of my first goals was against uh, Tampa. And I went by the bench and I literally gave him the finger. And I go, can't fucking play no more, eh? Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure he loved sure that. He, loved yeah. that. Yeah. he yeah, was great, it. though. He was great. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. You got to appreciate the the honesty. I think that's what we, we talk to guys uh, with the Flyers now. It's like the first yeah. thing that they say. You know, you know where you stand with them. And I think as a player, that's all yeah. you really want. You just want to know where you stand so you can adjust and and deal with your situation versus being like in the dark and yeah. you know how it goes. It's like you get confused and you, you know, the emotions kick in and it gets, you will quickly. never not know where you stand. Well, yeah. Right with him, Ever. Right. Ever. Yeah. yeah. You're right. Um, it's, uh, so speaking of coaches, who, who did you have a favorite, like, or did you have a couple that were, you know, right there together? Ted, Ted Nolan, uh, you know, he embraced, he loved my style. So like in yeah. junior, that guy that gives you that opportunity and believes in you, you're always going to have loyalty to him. He was, he was just great. He was, you knew where he stood with him. And if you worked hard, he was going to take the guy that worked hard over the skill every day of the week. Yeah. And we had a great goaltender in Dom. So we kind of had that mentality to be the hardest working team in the league. And uh, he was just, again, a very honest person, very loyal from where he's come from. I also like Dave Tippett a lot. Oh yeah, yeah, I heard good things about him. Yeah, I, like I, he he's very stern, he's very tough, uh, but he knew when to have fun with the guys and he knew when to pull the reins back. Uh, I really liked him. I was only there for a, a, a year and I was hurt like three quarters of the way through it. I wish I had more time with him, but probably the most structured coach that I ever played for uh, wow. in Dallas. So yeah, I'd say those two. Cool. And then as far as like the, these coaches that you had, obviously you're an emotional guy and, and, and they, they know what, you, what you're going to bring, right? They always know what you're, what, what, what how are you going to play and the energy you're going to bring, but like any of them ever like, you know, like, you know, Barney, just like, t it's like tone it down <laughs> or are they just like kind of free, free for all. Like as long as you're playing within the, the boundaries of a, a respectful game in the sense of like not putting the team down, all that stuff, you're fine. Yeah. yeah I, I'd say subcom no one ever said it to me. But a guy like Kevin Constantine uh, hmm. didn't like my style of game. Torch didn't like at the time um, my game. Uh, but I say Kevin Constantine subconsciously didn't even want me on the team. And that happens sometimes. A GM trades for a player. And and I was traded for Stu Barnes, who was a skilled guy. Mm -hmm. And Kevin Constantine just wanted no part of giving me any ice time. And I just got traded there. And I was like, what the fuck did I just do? I asked to get traded. And I had a great thing in Buffalo. I had scored 19 goals the year before. Yeah. Uh, had a great playoff run the year before. I had like 13 points in 15 games. And now I'm going to play in like six minutes again. Yeah. So subconsciously, it happened. But no coach ever told me to tone it down. I think the good ones, like Teddy Nolan, wanted me to play. When I went to New York, they wanted me to play. And the other stuff wasn't the forefront. That was... That was the second part. Whereas mm. the other, when I when I went to Tampa, I felt like all I could do was fight. When I went to Pittsburgh, and when Coach changed and Herb Brooks came in, he was like, "I want you to play." And then I then I took off and started scoring again. Yeah. Um, and, and if you look at this, is I think the biggest part of of my career when people say, "Oh, why didn't you score in Tampa? Or why didn't you score in Pittsburgh at the start? Why did you score 13 points in 15 games when you went to Colorado? Or sorry, nine and 13." Why did you have 19 goals in Buffalo or New York? You had 16 and 40 points, whatever it was. I'm like, 
look at all those teams. I was 190 pounds. When I played in Buffalo for six years, I had Brad May. I had Rob Ray. Yeah. I had Doug Huda. I had um, yeah. Gord Donnelly. I didn't have to fight the heavyweights. Mm. Now, if I wanted to fight Ty Domi, I'd go fight. But I didn't, ha- I didn't feel the pressure before the game started to go fight Donald Brashear. Right. Or, 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 or you. Or any of the big guys out there. When I got traded to Pittsburgh, I was the only one that fought. Yeah. And before the game started and Stu Grimson came on the ice, I know I have to fight him. Or I feel the pressure oh, to fight him. So when you're always, you, you can't concentrate on hockey. Then I go to Tampa, I'm the only guy. Then I go to New York. Well, we got Chris Simon. We got um, Dale Puritan. You're right. Steve McKenna. I don't have to do it again. Now I can concentrate on playing hockey. And if I want to fight, then I'll fight. Same thing when I go to Colorado. Peter Orell, Jim Cummins, Bob Bugner. We have a yeah. plethora of guys. So I don't have to be the only guy. I can concentrate on hockey. So that that protection layer of, of letting me play, my best years were because I had guys that were tougher than me that were willing to do it as well. Yeah, that's great insight. Yeah, I never had the luxury of uh, <laughs> yeah. of being able to go out there and try and play hockey. So I know I know I know what you're talking about when you're kind of the guy, the lone ranger, if you will. And I mean, how hard it is to actually focus hard. on play on hockey. It's like I'm trying to focus and prepare to play hockey, but I'm yeah. also worrying about you know Brashear, this guy, this yeah. guy, this guy, this guy. And it's like God, I'm like it, it's, the it's anxiety. Tough. It's tough. It's tough to play hockey when you're looking over your shoulder the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I uh, know. Yeah. But no, it, it's, it's good insight. And the average fan probably doesn't even look at that or understand that, uh, that the psychology in that, because God, it's, it's a different world when you're sitting there well before the game, the night before the game and yeah. sitting on the bench and like, it's all you can think of. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's like a terrifying feeling almost, you know, <laughs> Pre, pre-game naps. I still can't, I'm 50 years old. I still can't nap. Really? Hey? <laughs> I associate my naps of laying there and rolling around going, Oh my, okay. Is he going to hit me with the left or is he going to switch <laughs> up? Yeah. Am I going to do it right away? Am I going to like, uh, like, yeah. like, like all the things, as you know, it run through your mind. So mm-hmm. when I lay down, I, I just roll around and that's why I was always the first guy at the rink. I was there three and a half hours early. Cause I was like, I'd lay there and I'm just now I'm when I got to the rink, I was fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, because I got to talk to, to my trainers and yeah. I sit and have a coffee and bullshit and they take my mind off it. But when you're laying in a bed and it's pitch silent and you're beside your, your roommate and the only fucking thing going through your mind is a fight. It's I, I, I try to tell people that have never been in a fight. It would be like, you see that you see the movie where the kids getting in a fight in grade nine or 10 and the whole school is waiting for it. Yeah. yeah. And all they do is look at the clock. Yeah. And That's it's like one one minute, and a second goes by. It feels like a minute. Well, we did that 80, 82 times a year, not no, once. Not once. Every time we did it, it stepped on the ice. That was what we associated with. That's it. Yeah, Chi, uh, Craig yep. Barubi's uh, known him since I was a kid. He's a really good yep. friend of mine and Riley's, and uh, he he. I think it was the first time he was on, we were kind of talking about you know the preparation part, and you know Chief was a really tough guy, and he said, yeah. Try uh, taking a pregame nap in Detroit, and you know you got Probert and Coaster. He says he goes right out, fights Co- uh, fights uh, Proby. Proby, and he's like, "I'm I did well," and I'm like, "Fuck, hey, you know I did well there." Sits down, knock on the glass, looks up, Coaster, I'm next. Yeah. He's oh, like, yeah. oh, for fuck's sake!" <laughs> and he says, well, "I forget where they they were playing somewhere," and Keenan, you know, Mike Keenan's his yeah. coach, and he says, "Hey." I'm going to fucking scratch Brownie tonight. And Chief just goes, why? What the fuck? Are, why? Yeah. Don't. Please don't. Because they were playing. So maybe yeah. in Detroit again. And yeah. he's like, I got to fight all these animals you know, oh, yeah. by myself. So I can just, I, you know, I, obviously Riley and I, Riley and I have been really good friends for a long time. And um, I just, the coffee and the Sunnies. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> just, oh. like, all right. just to kind of keep your mind off of it. I, it just, it's got to be so hard. You're right. But, People just but, don't understand. Yeah. I didn't play against Brownie for that long, but my rookie year, we were playing in the spectrum. And I remember Rob Ray's like, fuck, this guy's tough. And I was like, I know. I've, I've watched hockey a long time. <laughs> he gets out there, and finally, Rob gets the better of Brownie. And I'm already in the penalty box. And I fucking, I'm high five. And I'm like, you just fucking beat Dave Brown. And he goes, sit the fuck down and don't high five me. I'm like, why? He goes, I got to go home again in five minutes. And they came <laughs> and Brownie kicked the shit right out. Oh, no. Really? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. 
Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. That's a whole other animal too, hey. It's like you're only as good as your last fight and like to all your ah. points there. It's like you get you, you fight first shift or first period. It's like it's yeah. not over. It's you not see, over. It's like not back working then, around, you know, it bobbing and weaving. How is this going to play out? It, it's I I I want to say it was was it the 04 or oh, oh no, it was oh, oh, 01 playoffs when we had the 5 on 5 brawl with Philly when I was in pit. Oh yeah. Um Tyler Wright, myself, Renny Corbet, I ended up fighting Chief. Um, Richardson fought Corbet and killed him. But I was kind of like with 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 Barube, Chief, and, and we were going back and forth. And he was trying to get loose. We were just throwing little ones, whatever. And I was like, looked away, and he kind of looked, and I gave him like a left. It was a muffin, but he just he lost he lost his balance. So it looked like I one punched him because the camera from ESPN wasn't like totally on him. And I'm on top of him, and he gets up in the next game. He's like, we're going again. I go. I am never fighting you again. Yeah. Go, I am one and all. Or at least everyone thinks that it would drive fucking nuts. Oh, give him shit. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah right. You skate good. off with the belt. Got a belt. belt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. You yeah. Love that one. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we were talking about this earlier. Unfortunately, you, you know, you had to, you basically retired with, you know, probably some concussion issues. Yeah. And Riley does a lot of work with that. Um, I don't know if you want to know. Yeah, well, no, I was just curious on uh, how that played out and and how you dealt with it and if you're still feeling any residuals from well, all the fights, but uh, maybe the way you went out as well. Yeah, it's always hard to to go out not on your own terms, but, you know, in the end, I, I wanted to be a dad more than a hockey player, um, and that was important to me in, in consulting with, with neurologists and, and a special one in Dr. Levy from Buffalo. We went through hundreds of fights. Mm. And the way I had to fight because of my size, I had to take a lot of a lot of punches to get in a few. And that's just that was just the reality of the size of the guys that we fought. Uh, so I took a lot of punches, you know, for every, you know, between junior and NHL and AHL, I had over 400 fights. So let's say you take minimum five punches in each of those fights. It's a lot of fucking punches, yeah. blows to the head. Mm -hmm. uh, it was tough at the start. Um, I had some some bad times in my last year just you know very depressed and um crying for no reason uh, i felt like i was menopausal mm -hmm. uh but now i i probably get a headache more than the normal person um yeah i think you're more apt when you drink uh to make bad decisions even more than the normal person i don't think it all clicks at all the times but everyday life I have no problems. Just, I would say headaches and memory loss. Now, I don't know if that's just getting older or a combination of, of, of both those things, but you can ask me something from 1993. I'll give it to you. You asked me to go get steak and, and salmon at the grocery store. I could be coming back with lube and toilet paper. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's Russian roulette when the wife sends me to the grocery store. Oh, your short-term memory yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah well yeah i mean i'm, I'm glad you're <clears throat> i'm glad you're doing uh good um and that's you know because you hear a lot of really yeah. dark stories with some of these guys and um i do a lot of work with concussion tbi related stuff mental health related stuff so if i if there's anything i could do it to help you i mean you know, the plant Thank medicine you. stuff that's really been helpful for for me i mean i, I was similar i took <laughs> i took a shitload of blows too you know to throw to throw a few and uh yeah. it takes its toll and uh, I, I can relate for sure. So I'm there, glad you're doing not, well. There, there's there's nothing worse though for all of us. Anytime <laughs> something bad happens, um, and and sometimes very tragic uh, to guys that did what we did, because you can connect the dots, right? Yeah. You, you you can connect and how it can become a downward spiral very quick. Um, it should it just just get sad and and, and we get it. We, <laughs> yeah. People that aren't in that world or that realm, they're like, oh, what. A, what a loser this guy did this or what what a this guy was like no that guy was a really nice guy yeah like, really really good guy just had some demons and it might have been just reciprocal because of 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 what he did how he did it um yeah. and a lot of things go into that people don't know that's right yeah. and i gotta ask you you know like obviously you embodied the role as well as anybody in, in fact probably above and beyond you know I did a version of that and all these guys have done it, right? You're, 
you're embodying not just being a hockey player but this fighter right how hard was it for you when you when you transitioned out of the game like this like th- this character that you created for yourself and like and, and kind of navigating with purpose do you have any issues with that nope not at nope. all not at all like people will say like i'm completely different off the ice i like to have fun and joke around but listen if if if, if i'm in if i'm in slovakia and no one knows who I am. I'm never going to tell them that I played hockey for a living. Right. I'm, I'm Matthew from Ottawa, Ontario. And if they figure it out, like I'm more than happy to talk hockey and, and whatever. But I don't identify as a hockey player. I don't identify as a cat because I guess that's kind of cool now. Or But yeah. uh, I don't identify <laughs> as a just... hockey player. I identify as, as a father and, and a person. So it, it wasn't hard to to change that mantra. And it was actually kind of refreshing now when i go to friday night fights do i love reminiscing about old yeah. stories absolutely does it does it give me a little boost of energy when when you watch an old fight and or when i go there in philadelphia march 8th that the fans cheer no that's awesome that yeah that's awesome and it gives you that short glimpse of a memory of what a life used to be like yeah um, without having to take the punches anymore which is nice yeah, no doubt. Yeah. yeah, and I asked that question because I know that a lot of guys do struggle with that identity yeah. piece. Even guys that aren't fighters still struggle with, like, you've embodied yeah. the hockey player. That's all you know, right? So all of a sudden, it's like the, no more locker room, no more, you know, camaraderie I, I, and all I, that. I, I, I miss the locker room, and I guess my friends now fill my locker room, and I get a chance through a lot of events that I do and travel around playing hockey events uh, for charity, and I get to see a lot of these guys. So I, I still get that a bunch of times of the year. It's what I miss the most, certainly. And, and maybe because I got into media working with ESPN and TSN mm-hmm. right out of the gate. So I think I had that that ego fluffing, uh, mm-hmm. maybe, that I stepped right out and I went right from being an NHL player to getting my ego fluffed. Oh, I saw you on TV last night. So may- maybe that's why that I never had that um, missing or why it was never never hard to transition out of the game. Um, but certainly my, my friends let me know I'm, I'm not even a very good hockey player anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you play any men's league? No, 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 you're done completely. I can't do that. Yeah. Guys, you, you're still going to have that identity. You're always going to have someone's younger that wants to try, uh, just, just like in a bar, there's guys that yeah. just try to be punks. There's always going to be that person. So no, I, I can't do that. I hear you. I, I, I spent the last uh, 13 years navigating that and I've, I've, I've settled in, you know, a, a B, you know, B men's league where I can cruise around. It's an it. a oh, is it A? All right. Or yeah, I could be a skill so guy, well. you know, take yeah. a mushroom or a little cannabis before I can just there like be a skill guy and, you know, except for we had a championship game the other day. I almost got into it. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. Like, I'm like watching him. I'm like, oh, the eyes are starting to go. <laughs> start to start twirl a little bit. Yeah, no, it was more just, you know, I, yeah, 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 yeah. I had to go puff to puff the chest though, just a little bit, but you know, oh, yeah. it really wasn't going to do anything. But uh, I can imagine it's a guy like yourself with the identity that you created for yourself yeah. that you'd have a target yeah. on your back no matter what league you played yeah, in. No, so. no chance. That's why I love the charity <laughs> events. It's all for yeah. fun. Yeah. I literally go at 25%. Yeah. I never take a <laughs> shot on goal. No. <laughs> well, I, I, I saw the other day you had a tra- uh, Travis Kelsey shirt on. Pulling against the Bills. What what's that all about? Well, I'm a massive, massive New York Jets fan. So I, I did know that. I've seen yeah. you in your jersey yeah. before. So there's 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 not much to talk about the New York Jets, except for for 39 years they've disappointed me. It's like <laughs> it's 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 not good. So I have a bet with one of my good friends. He's a Bills fan, the start of the year, loser of the two teams, combination of score. If they tied because they both won one game, Bills won. Loser has to take, you guys know Chefs in Buffalo, famous restaurant. Yes, yes. Always busy. So I have to take a blow-up doll out to lunch while everyone else around me gets to watch. That's, that's, our, that's our bet. And her name is Jetta. Um, so we're, we're working on that. The yeah. second part of the bet was if the Jets or the Bills got to the Super Bowl, you didn't have to win it, but you had to win the AFC the other guy has to get the other logo of the team tattooed on their body. Wow. Oh. I have lots, lots of tattoos. It's not that big, but I don't really want a Bill's yeah. tattoo. <laughs> Sneak it yeah. in there. 
So I, I was going to try to find, but it had to be three inches by three inches. So it's going to take up a lot of space. Like it's a big tattoo. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> so I was all KC. And yeah. I came into a, a, a party of 50 people, KC, Blair and Taylor Swift doing the tomahawk <laughs> chop. Yeah. Uh, of course I'm going to be the asshole. I, I, yeah. I love playing the villain. So, and if they right. lost, I was going to buy a Lamar Jersey and, uh, Zeke Flowers, like we were, we were, we were going <laughs> yeah. flower. We were, we, yeah, we were, we, we were going all out. So I'm very happy the Bills lost. I'm sad for <laughs> Buffalo. They deserve yeah. a championship team, but not while I got a tattoo bet on it. Yeah, I yeah. hear you. And wide right again. These poor yeah, guys, I was man. Oh my God. No, you weren't. Oh, oh my God. yeah. I was, oh. I was up chanting wide right, wide right, wide right. <laughs> and my, my wife doesn't really know sports. She's like, she's like. What's what's wide right and it went wide right and they're like oh no yeah. it like, yeah. so I explained it to her she goes you really are an asshole yeah. <laughs> well you I know you're into the betting scene uh, who's gonna win the Super Bowl who do you got winning it oh man I San Fran's tough San Fran's tough uh, I think Baltimore wins uh, next week I think they beat KC. Uh, but San Fran's going to be tough. The only the only thing is Brock Purdy ha- has been awesome. But if it's tied late, uh, very close late, I'd probably go Baltimore. And Lamar's been that good this Lamar, year. He's yeah, the MVP. He's, and he yeah. threw for 152 yards last week and had 100 yards rushing. Like, he's going to get 100 yards rushing right. anytime he wants. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's the toughest thing about stopping him. So if they can stop McCaffrey and – both sides have so many weapons. Uh, I just I, I I don't see Baltimore losing next week. I, I I think they're far superior team. If there's a year that you can beat KC, this is the year. This is the year. And and Detroit's been a great story. I don't see them beating uh, uh, beating San Fran, but man, what a great story they've been. And Dan yeah. Campbell, what a great coach. Yeah, it's, it has been. Um, also, uh, we had a while to go here. Who's your uh, pick for NHL to win the Stanley Cup this year? Wow, it would have been Vegas at the start of the year. They're, they're not yeah. playing great right now. There's a lot of injuries. Um, I'd probably still stick with Vegas. Colorado I like a lot. A lot of surprise teams this year. Right? Yeah. With, like No one picked Vancouver or Winnipeg to be doing what they're doing. No one picked Philadelphia to be in the situation that they're in. And there's so much parity and so much comes down to – to staying healthy, but you know, if I it, put a gun to my head right now, I'm 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 on Colorado um, or Vegas if they are healthy. Yeah, yeah, solid choices. Yeah, for yeah. sure, for yeah. sure. Well, Barney, we appreciate you, man. This has been awesome. Yeah, yeah, These really appreciate awesome. the time, man. Yeah, this oh. has been uh, fun. We'll awesome. see you March eight for sure. Yeah, we'll be we'll be, we'll be there. We'll so be we'll there see you there, sure. man. Love Looking it. forward to hear some stories, it, man. Yeah, Appreciate- it'll be a lot of fun. We'll uh, we'll definitely hook up and such a great event. They the, the Flyers alumni. I, I was throwing it out there. I was like, I'll even I'll even stay an extra couple days and do the the wives carnival. You can get a dunk tank and a oh man, and, and uh, <laughs> just, just to donate some money back to uh, the wives carnival. So I'm excited to see you guys in person. Yeah, man. Keep up the awesome work guys. I love it. You, you do the same, man. And, and seriously, thank you so much for your time, brother. Hey, cheers boys. Big thank you to Matthew Barnaby for hopping on. What a character, oh, man. Oh my gosh. Dude. I, like we said, I, I remember the first time I saw him play and I'm like, this guy's <laughs> out of fucking control. And I, Wires love across. It. Yeah. and I love it. And I love it. Uh, I, you know, we talked about it like we were, we were almost the same age. Actually, he's probably 10 years older than me because he's yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. But, but, uh, we were kind of the same age and, and, uh, every time we, Buffalo, we just kind of, you know, I was working the visiting room, like I said, and he was just awesome, yeah. funny guy, man, just always, but an annoying motherfucker to play against. Oh my, my God. language, but he, you know, he was, but like we said, man. If he would have played here in Philly, like everybody hated him in Philly, and I oh, and I know why. Sure, right. But if he would have played here, he would have had the place going nuts with his, oh some gosh. of his antics. Oh yeah. Um, but he played a long time, man. But yeah, yeah. for sure. Thank thanks uh, to him, man, for joining us. Hundred percent. I don't think there's a bigger pest ever. I mean, I, he might it, be the best pest ever. You're right. Like you talk about poking the hornet's nest. I mean, like, <laughs> oh, he, he was did the not champ, care, man. The he champ. Did not care. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. But yeah, yeah. No, I know. Uh, I appreciate him hopping on. Yeah, and it's awesome. Sharing some stories, some laughs, and wish him the best. Yes, sir. All right, Nast. Is it that time?
It's that time. Oh, oh, it's that time for Clear Rum Questions. Brought to you by Clear Rum. Go to clearrum.com slash shop. Type in the code RIGS. Nasty 2023 and get 35% off at MPA only. Beauty. Let's do it. All right. Starting us off, we got Mike Pohl over on Twitter. Aside from our guy, Riles, which player are you looking forward to seeing this upcoming alumni game? Well, always looking forward to seeing my boy, Riles, and I get Skills-y. to play with him, old Skillsy Boo. <laughs> um, Richie. Richie. Boy, Rick Bone, yeah, man. I'm excited uh, to see I that, too. I was talking to him the other day, he's like... He's like, I got, I got to get some skates in, boy. <laughs> yeah, get some reps in. <laughs> yeah, because you know he play. I, now he may not be playing. I didn't ask him the other day when I talked to him, but uh, he, you know, he's plays men's league. He plays goalie. goalie. Yeah, <laughs> he I know. Plays right? goalie. So uh, he said he needed to get himself, uh, you know, in a little bit of shape, uh, better shape, I guess. But he's fishing all the time. He's down in Florida. Uh, but he'll be here tomorrow. But I, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing Rick Bone play. Oh, yeah, and, me and, too. And the uh, ovation I think he deserves and will get. Oh, definitely. Um, Maybe we'll see a, a shift or two from him. Up well, and down, I don't back think the Bruins will <laughs> see the shift, <laughs> well, especially the hit. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, no, I'm, I'm really looking, for, I'm looking forward to see everyone. But, like, yeah. Richie, especially seeing him back in a – Flyers uniform. I think it's so cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm so happy he decided to come play. Yeah, man. I think it'll He's, be a, some emo- he, emotions with him. He was with born to be a Flyer. For sure. You know, it's just like Tony D'Angelo said to us that day, that that guy's a hockey 100%. player. He was a hockey player to me. He's my favorite player. Yeah. Scotty Lawton, same thing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to seeing Rick Bone. Yeah, me too. Great question. Mm-hmm. Hoagie Mouth won over on Twitter. Love the story, boys. Do you think it will benefit the culture to get the boys back to Rexy's? Since I live five blocks away, lol. <laughs> Is Rexy still open? I well, I must be. It must be, I guess, right? Yeah. Yeah, I I have it. It was like a landmark. Of I have it. Oh stories. my god, dude! When I was in Florida with the Panthers, and we we came in, I think it was the second time we came in. We had an extra day, and. Clark, he made the, but we took a bus over to Rexy's and oh, we had sure. dinner in there. Uh, it was pretty cool because I had been there when I was a kid because my old man would take me uh, sometimes. Uh, but I don't know if they'll bring that back. I, I don't, the guys these days, it's yeah, more it's of a, the, a little different <laughs> establishments. Yeah. yeah <laughs> right. know, like, uh, yeah, they go different places and, and, and it's also different because they, they're fed really well at, uh, post game. You know, so it's not like they have to go eat dinner. They right. eat dinner after the game uh, in the building, and then they go on their way. That's so, it. Yeah. But that's a, that's a great question, though, just because Rexy's up. What a, what a spot. Yeah, I think it was mandatory that you show it up there, Mandy. too. It was Mandy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you had no choice. <laughs> it was Mandy Moore, buddy. Yeah, Mandy <laughs> yeah, Moore. It was Mandy Moore. <laughs> Over on Instagram, Lester Weeb wants to know, how'd you get the nickname Nasty? Ooh. We don't I got daughters, you know, like, uh, <laughs> I, well, I can say this, you know, I've been known to say crazy things here and there, I guess. And, uh, Mark Gregg's the one that gave me, uh, the nickname nasty guys called Perfect me name. like D D nice. And then one day I may have saw like a woman or something walking by. And I think I said something. Just like a guy would, normal guy thing. And he was like, Jesus, you're nasty, man. He's like, we call you D-Nasty instead of, you know, D or D-Nice. So that's basically how I got the nickname. And it it literally was immediate. All the guys are laughing, and it's like nasty from then on. And that was like, what, 99, 98, 99? Actually, oh, wow. yeah, somewhere around there, 98. I'm not sure if I heard that story before. Now. Yeah, he was the one. He was the one that did it. I thought originally. you had that way before that. I no, I didn't because, you know, it was funny, like, when I first started uh, in Florida and then even with the Flyers, like, in in Florida, my nickname was, was JR because Sudsy Jr. Mm. And a couple guys called me Bubbles, and I'm like, I'm not going to be called Bubbles because Sudsy. Yeah, I, oh, yeah. No, I, we, we can't do that, but they did it to irritate me. But most guys called me JR, and then when I, when I came here, if my dad wasn't in the room, they'd be like, Suds, they would call me that. And then once we went to the Phantoms, that's when the whole thing came about. But, uh, yeah, no. It's a that's great it. story. Great. Yeah, it's not that great of a story, <laughs> but it's a good question. Dean I get asked, asked all the time. Matty Court asked me one time on the radio. I, w- I was jumping on with him, and he's like, how did you get that name? But the girls were, like, young. And I was yeah. like, I have two daughters, and they might be listening. So, yeah, um, yeah that's kind of how I got it. Phil McCoskey over on Instagram 
What's the best advice for parents slash kids that are just starting the ice hockey journey now? Well, I guess it depends on the age, right? Um, f- what I've learned in the last three years, and Riley, you do a lot of learn to play, so you could probably answer uh, better than I can as far as, well, I've coached too. I coached for a couple of years with Elvis when he first started, but just let the kids have fun. Yep, that's exactly the what I was The pressure, and I'm guilty sometimes. Of, like I find myself in the car I, – going over the game and they, hey what do you got to do you know top of the blue you know like don't drop just to drop you know and, and i'm like dude he's nine years old you mm-hmm. know he knows what to do and I, you just want him to have fun really because i've seen and you hear you've probably seen it and heard it in rinks some of the parents you know they have joke like funny commercials about it like a dad banging on hey, that's real it right. happens man and um you feel bad for the kids if because you may deter them from wanting to play. That's it. And that's what I try not, you know, I try to like, uh, I can't remember who told me, but they said, I always wait 24 hours before I even talk about the game. And by then, usually you kind of almost forgot about it. Unless it's like, great, he played great, you know, like, but I, there's something, uh, you know, I think he did wrong. I want to show him I wait a day. That's why I video all the time. I probably look like a psycho hmm. um, standing there videoing. But uh, I just say like, let the kids have fun, man. That's, that's the main thing. And, what are the percentages of kids making? Th- it's great to dream, right? Like to make it. Every kid, you know, would love to play in the NHL, but we just know it. We know it's not going to happen. But just let them have fun. That's my that's my advice. Yeah, I mean, it's a game. You, you have to allow them to have fun and just support them. I, mean, I think to your, what you're you're saying there is, it's easy to get all excited and then you know overcoach them and yeah. put that extra pressure on. I think I think the best thing you do is just like pat them on the back and, and support them yes there, there could be some coaching as they evolve a little bit yeah but i think um you know a lot of the mental health issues that kids struggle with is not only their own, the pressure they put on themselves but the pressure that the parents put on right i mean it's it's it's, it's unfortunate that it, some parents just go crazy with it yeah. and um you know they do. Uh, the, the kids unfortunately suffering they and, do um so gotta have fun support them you know it's gotta be enjoyable it is a game and then and, until you you get to a point where it's no longer fun, you might want to yeah. reconsider because yeah. no matter what level you're playing at, it is still a game and there has to be an element of fun. I, I, I'm pretty sure my son, Elvis, I don't think he knows what pressure is because during the game, he's baller. He could throw that clip up there like he did before. He's humping Just the dance post. It. He didn't hump the post. Yeah, <laughs> I will not allow that again. Jeez, and we're not posting that one. We do have it on video. There's a video file of it. Instead of just thanking it, all the moms start yelling, and he turns, and he uh, does not even go there. He's grateful. This is a PG. <laughs> so, uh, he showed his gratitude. He showed his gratitude. Yeah, uh, but yeah, he dances around, and I and I love that. And you know, it's funny because Sudsy, my my dad, is like, he needs to be fuck. I'm like, dude, he's nine. Yeah, dad, he's nine. I know, but like, he's prancing around, and then he lets a goal, and he looks stupid. I'm like. I don't he's not care if he's having fun, yeah. man. That's all I care about, you know. Yeah, he'll get to a point where the coach eventually will take a little yeah, more seriously. Yeah, I think it'll be like, yeah. yeah, they're not going to do that. Yeah, exactly. But if he Player. keeps it loose, like, hey, right, yeah, exactly. I, I don't really, I really don't care. Exactly. Uh, but that that's a great question it because is. it really is important for parents to let their kids have fun and and yep. you know let it evolve. <clears throat> yeah, great questions. And that's a wrap, Nas. That's it. I can't believe it. One twenty four. One twenty four. One forty four. Where you been sleeping? That's rap. You're right, Riggs. <laughs> yeah, it's a wrap. 144. It's a wrap in the books. In the books, 144. Can you believe it? I cannot. I can't believe you said 124. No, 124. I can't believe it. I can't believe this trophy's here between yeah, us. Yeah, well, we talked about this. I, know. I guess we so, got to return it. Gotta return we had our day it. with a cup. Yep. Pass it around. Thanks again, Jim Boucher, Dunlops, at Hollydale. What a cup. Oh. I hope he's not mad. That we had everyone's name we carved it in, there. in there. So sorry about that, Jim. Hope to get a new ring next year. Yeah, you might have to add a ring. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can't wait to see what Jim pulls out for our rings. I yeah, mean, well. the, the league and, and uh, Mr. Mackey, Jim Mackey there. Oh, yeah. I'm assuming we're going to get some really cool rings. I would think so. You would think. Yeah, with that kind of effort. Yeah. <laughs> that kind of Except performance. For me, I mean, both my thumbs are broken, <laughs> but we're good. All right. All right. Until next week for 145, be sure to subscribe tune in like our stuff comment questions all that good stuff yes until then stay safe knuckleheads see ya